Oh, it is recording. Welcome back to another video here in the off-grid garage. <laughs> this is part two. No, this is this is attempt attempt two of making this video about BMS's battery management systems. And I started <laughs> I started recording everything yesterday already, but I couldn't finish the video. See what happened. Let's turn on the solar panel, and we are charging with 1.1 amps at the moment. It's a bit cloudy outside. Well, because of the cloudy weather, I had to change from the PWM charge controller to an MPPT. Ah, uh, well, this is exactly what happens when you do solar experiments, you know. A thunderstorm rolls in, big clouds, no sun at all anymore, shading on the panels. What the heck? How am I supposed to do these videos without sun? I should move to a country where the sun always shines. Please set it to 100 amp, and if you would exceed, the frog. Well guys, we are not charging at all anymore from solar here. It's that cloudy outside. Zero amps. <laughs> yeah, how do you make videos about solar energy when you have no sun, right? <laughs> this is just insane. So today it's a little bit better. We've got the sun just peeking out of the clouds. It's still not optimal for my testing, but we can start and give it a try, you know? So, okay, let's have a look. What happens here? We've got two sets of four battery cells here. One is in parallel, so all the negative terminals are connected, all the positive terminals are connected, and the other one is in series. So positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. And then you have your main positive here and your main negative on this side, and this forms a 12 volt battery, while this one is still a 3.2 volt battery all in parallel. And then I've got this little guy here. This is a cell meter 8. Apparently it's a battery voltage capacity checker, balance discharger and servo tester. <laughs> this is insane what you get for $11 including shipping. You get all these functions in one device. Well, not quite. It's mostly people flying radio controlled like drones and airplanes and radio controlled cars and everything. They use these LiPo batteries in their models. And this is the tester for it. Um, you, can, you can see all the different cells in your battery pack and how good they are, voltages and everything. And you can test your servos as well. So this is apparently what this little guy is for. But I have now connected this one to my battery here, to my 4S battery pack, 12 volt. And we can see up here, it already says 1S, 2S, 3S and 4S at the top. So it has recognized we've got four batteries connected. And what you can do is here, you can see the main voltage of the whole battery pack. It's 13.33 volt at the moment. And if you press the cell button here, it tells you cell number one is on 3.335, this is cell number two, cell number three, and cell number four. So you can see all the voltages and it saves you using a multimeter and testing all the batteries individually one after another. This is so much easier to just check through all the battery cells. And we also have the mode button here, which shows you the total as well and it gives you the max and min of the battery. So this measures basically the highest cell and the lowest cell and shows you the difference between them. So you don't need to do the maths anymore. How good is that? How good is that? For $11, insane. So and because this pack was exactly like this in parallel for over a week, it is super good balanced, right? We've got only four millivolt difference between cell number two and three. If you press mode again, it gives you the max. This is cell number one. It has changed now. And cell number two. This is the minimum. And then it goes back to the total. The frog again. Insane. The frog. Ah, come on, frog. Shh, shh. Well, this is basically what this one does. It does not do any capacity checking. This is, this is just totally wrong here. It doesn't do any watt hours or milliampere hours or something. It doesn't do any like this. Nothing. Zero. And balance and discharge. Mm, yeah, well, you can set a minimum discharge voltage, I think, in the device. So you can set this one to three volts. 
and then it discharges all the cells to 3 volts and stops the discharge. I haven't tested this function yet, so that's what the manual says at least. So I think it is kind of a balance thingy then, because they're all on 3 volts then. I don't know exactly. So I'm just using it as a voltage monitor, saves me handling this one here. As you can see, we've got our, um, what's this one called here, our breaker. <laughs> we've got our breaker hooked up all our cabling and this all goes into, uh, into our MPPT charge controller. I haven't bothered putting this one back in because this one is more powerful anyway. And of course you have built this wonderful, beautiful 12 volt battery now. You want to charge it and use it of course, right? So you've got your charge controller, you've got your solar panels on your roof, everything is connected, everything is good to go to charge your 12 volt battery and save energy, right? Okay, let's do that then. Let's go into the app of this charge controller and turn on the charge switcher. Let me go to the status. We can see the solar voltage and the battery voltage here. And now it should actually, there we go, 8.7 amps from the solar panel voltage drops a little bit. It looks for the perfect maximum. It looks for the, it looks for the best MPPT, maximum power point tracking on the solar panel. And because we've got cloudy skies at the moment, this will go up and down, up and down. And this is exactly one of the many benefits of this MPPT charge controller. It tracks the maximum power point. See, we are getting 115 watt from the solar panel at the moment. And now it goes down, more clouds are coming. Doesn't matter. We are charging with 7.7 .7 amps. And we can see already the voltage is rising, which is good because we want to charge the battery, right? Okay, let's check the voltages. 354, 356. Oh, and cell number three is already above 3.4 volts now. Cell number four is 374. So we've got one cell, this is number one, two, three, four, number three, is higher than all the other ones for some reason. We don't know exactly why, right? There we go, it's over 3.4 volts, while the other ones are still at 3.38 volts. Well, and if you have a look again here at the charge curve of lithium iron phosphate batteries, you can see that at the beginning at 2.5 volts, or when the battery is empty, the curve goes fairly steep up, right? Until it hits about 3.2 volts. And then it's almost flat until 80-85% around. And then it has another peak up to 3.65 volts. So you've got a very steep incline at the beginning of the curve and at the end. And we are at, see the meter actually says 86% for cell number 4 now. We are at the end of this curve and the voltage rises very quickly in these cells now. And when we check here for the delta, see we've got 37 millivolt difference now. Well, before it was only, it was less, I have forgotten the number, I put it in here. So this is exactly what happens now when you charge this lithium iron phosphate battery. The cells will drift apart a little bit while charging, discharging, while you cycle them, they will go apart from each other. We need 29 now, so it goes up and down depending on our charging current. We've got 8.89 amps at the moment, sun is coming back a little bit, it's nice. And this is mainly because of tolerances when producing these battery cells in the factory. They've got the same machine where they're built on, they've got the same chemicals, the same goop inside, probably the same guy is producing all these battery cells at the same day and you would expect they are very much the same, right? But now, as you can see, when we put them in duty in a serious connection, they are drifting apart a little bit. So what can you do, you know? So what we know about these battery cells is we can charge them from 2.5 as a minimum voltage to 3.65 volts as the maximum 100% state of charge voltage. And you probably don't want to charge them to 100%. So 3.65 volts is a bit high. How about if we charge them only to 3.4 volts to about 80%. So 3.4 volts times 4 because we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 cells. 
This would mean we have a maximum voltage voltage of 13.6 volt. And if we have a look here in our setting of the solar charge controller, this line here, it's called improved charge voltage. This is the bulk charge voltage, 13.6 volts. This is the maximum we will charge the battery to and then the charger will turn off. So this is all good and fine. Everything is set up perfectly. You're charging your battery to 80% only. Keep it healthy, long cycle life, right? Well, here comes the problem. The solar charge controller has only two cables. One goes to the most negative and one goes to the most positive terminal of this whole battery pack. So it can reach the voltage of the whole pack, but it cannot read, it does not know the voltage of individual cells, like this little guy here. And this is the danger now, because one of the battery cells has already reached 3.4 volts. And this is the maximum we said before we want to charge the battery to. So the solar charge controller should now shut down this one battery, but keep the other one charged. And of course, this is not possible because we've got only two leads. We're pushing power into this battery pack, but we cannot control individual cells. Well, the charge controller still charges the whole battery pack because it doesn't know about this one cell. It only reads the total voltage of the pack. Well, if you keep charging and discharging this battery pack as it is in this setup, you will eventually damage this battery cell number three because the voltage of this particular cell will rise with every charge now. And at some stage, it will exceed the 3.65 volts. Okay, so the easiest solution, if we don't want to put them in parallel again, we leave them in series connection and just use our preferred light bulb setup and discharge cell number three. I've connected one cable to the light bulbs on this side and I connect the other one here. And now we are discharging just cell number three. And we can see the voltage is already going down. There we go. Problem solved, right? If we go for the delta, ah, we can see cell number one and cell number three. But cell number one is now the highest. Okay, quick, quick, quick. Take these ones off. And now discharge cell number one. Lights coming on. Voltage number one going down. Excellent, problem solved. Oh no, now it's cell number two. So I'll quickly discharge cell number two. Okay. 3.5 volts we are. See, and this is exactly the point now. Because we have set 13.6, 13.6 volts as our maximum voltage, which is 3.4 volt per individual cell. We've got now cells here which have far more. This one was at 3.5 volts just now. So we've got 127 millivolt difference between the highest and the lowest cell now. And this obviously changes constantly as you have just seen. And then you have to put your load on individual cells to discharge them to bring them down again. And you also have to observe the maximum voltage of the whole pack, 13.6. Well, it's good to have this programmed into the charge controller, but what if this one fails? You would blow up your whole battery bank and start a fire. So if you want to do this all day long, measuring individual voltages, the overall voltage, and then discharge individual cells, discharge, disconnect your solar power if the maximum voltage is reached, well, congratulations, you don't need a BMS then, because you just got your first full-time position as a battery management system operator. Yeah, well, guys, and this is exactly one of the many functions a BMS does for your battery bank. It observes the individual voltages as well as the maximum overall system voltage. It observes your currents. And most importantly, it checks on all your individual cell voltages. And that's why these BMS is for a 20 SPEX or 20 cells in a, in a series connection. They come with all this wiring harness here because you have to connect them to each individual cell. So the internal electronic can monitor the cells. I've got another BMS here which I bought for our solar gate project here. This is only a 20 amp lithium ion BMS. And this has the same cabling wiring stuff here. It connects to each individual cell 
and measures the voltage. And if one of the cells gets too high, it automatically connects a little circuit inside and discharges only this one cell until it gets back into the same voltage area where all the others are. And of course you can get them in all sizes. This is a 200 amp fully programmable, programmable. Well, you've got an app for this one to set up. You can program all the parameters. Well, this one is hardwired inside. You cannot do anything with it. This is a protection board for these lithium ion batteries. Well, I guess some people have done this in the past when there was no BMS to buy. They have measured all the voltages individually of their bank and then used a load to discharge only individual cells to bring them back down and keep them in the same voltage level. And I've seen quite a few comments under my and other videos as well where people asked, well, I've got these batteries now being delivered. Do I need a BMS as well? Of course you do. You do. This is your a BMS is basically your safety net. This is your safety device in your whole system. If your charge controller is not correctly set up and keeps charging the batteries from the solar, you will eventually overcharge one or multiple cells of your whole battery bank and damage your whole battery. And the BMS will exactly prevent that from happening. It will disconnect your charging. It will disconnect your discharging, your load as well, if the battery gets really low. If your inverter does not cut off at 2.5 volts, the BMS will do this. This is your insurance for your battery. So please, as soon as you put batteries in series, you have to have a BMS to control the individual cells and keep your whole battery bank healthy, of course. All right, guys, I hope this answers some of your questions in regards to a BMS, if you need one or not. The answer would be yes, you would need one. If you, if you want to keep your batteries for a little bit longer, you should probably get a BMS. And in one of the next videos, I will show you exactly how to connect this BMS to our 16S battery bank inside this box here and connect the app to it. And then we go through all the parameters and see how this all works and how we can protect the whole battery with this one BMS. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for all your comments and all your support here on the channel. So keep them coming and we shall see us again in one of the next videos coming out very, very soon. Thanks again, guys. See you then. Bye-bye.